Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In the past couple of months, I've been debating which direction I should take this channel to because I feel like I'm not pushing it as hard as I want to in the direction that I want to. You might have noticed I've been making content like, oh, what's new in the next update? Or why is Prisma faster? Or what are people arguing about on Twitter? And I, I don't, <laughs> this is so, so tiring. Uh, so I, I try to push myself away from that a little bit because the whole goal Goal of this YouTube channel was always to understand the inner workings of web development and CSS and JavaScript and how to go about design and stuff. So moving forward, I, I really want to focus more on the fundamentals and uh, to give you the ability to create anything that you want. And I want to expand that further to game development and also maybe covering electronics on this channel. So. <laughs> our Arduino project and Raspberry project. Uh, I feel like that's more important towards a career in just as a engineer in general, uh, rather than having most of the content being focused on fucking hell, what's next server actions doing? You know, that just does not have the same effect. And I, I'm not gonna make videos like that. So in this episode, we are gonna cover CSS units and where I use them and how to use them. One of the most popular ones out there is pixels. Now pixels is an absolute unit, meaning that once you set the size of it, that's it. It's not going to change. It doesn't care about any like parent div, like what size that has or the viewport or your screen size. It does not matter. So as you can see here, I set a paragraph text and by default, the browser is going to do 16 pixels. And you can check that here in settings. If you had here, it's on medium now. And I believe you can also go here to customize fonts where you can also select the standard font and really hone down here on the size. So if I do 48, as you can see, that scales up really big. However, if I explicitly set the font size here to 16 pixels, now, as you can see, it's not responsive anymore. And that's really bad for accessibility. So let's take the 16 pixels here and I'm gonna change it with one rem. And as you can see, the results are pretty much the same. So where does that 16 pixels come from? Well, it comes from the browser default that's set here. Now, how can we modify that? Well, we can modify that with root like that. All right. So rem basically means is always going to reference the root element, which is this one. Now you could also do HTML like that. That's going to equal pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that on root, the specificity is going to be higher over HTML. So it's a pseudo class. Um, okay, so as you can see, we change that to one rem. And if I change the font size to something larger, as you can see, we keep the accessibility. Now, some people have a hard time calculating this, but come on, man, get a calculator. 16 pixels. So if you want to hack, you can go here to the root and say font size and do 60 point 2.5% and that's going to equal to basically 10 pixels here. So if I do 3 RAM, if we check the like the computed values here, you're going to see that we should have 30 pixels. But oh, come on, it's not that hard. What I also like about RAM, not only that you keep the accessibility and scaling is all nice and uniform, but if if you don't do the 60.2.5% hack, just increment everything by 25. So you can have a 1 rem, 1.25 rem, 1.5 rem, because that's only going to increment it by 4. And from my experience, I found it quite consistent to scale up font sizes by 4, uh, rather than doing 2 on this one. And then the next one is like 37 and then 42. You know, it's quite random. Now, it tends to be better to choose RAM or pixels. Now, be careful. This applies to other properties as well. So if you're doing padding, you're doing margin, and you're using pixels there, you might have a different effect. So take a look at this. We have a blue diff here and a red diff here. On the blue diff, we are using 16 pixels. And on the RAM here, on the red one, we are using one RAM as padding. But as you can see, if we have a different font size in our browser, we are going to have completely different effects. So make sure you are also aware of this. If you also want to scale up the margins and the paddings equally, that is also being affected here. And the same thing goes for borders and everything else. So as you can see, if I scale this up, 
the box with RAM is gonna scale up the padding as well. Uh, and if I scale this up, 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 as you can see, the border as well gets scaled up equivalently. However, when it comes to pixels, as you can see, the border stays the same size. There's one more thing I wanna show you regardless if you're using rems or pixels. So let's say here for the padding, I'm gonna add five rems like that. Now, as you can see, we have five rems at the top as padding. We have five rems here at the bottom as padding. Uh, and then we have an extra five more here, right? So we have 10 basically between the elements and then five on the outside. Check this out. If I change this over to margin, now the space is equal. Why is that? <laughs> How come on padding you have double the space here, but not on margin? And what happens if I, let's say we have this, I'll, I'll name it PX2, okay? We'll grab PX2 here and just say margin top 10 rem and hit save. Why did that only change a little bit? And not a lot. We should have five RAM and 10 RAM. Well, it's because of something called margin collapse. If you have a margin and then you have a margin here, like the way I'm adding to the top, the bigger value is gonna overtake the other one. So this five margin RAM here is basically equal to nothing. And only this one is gonna be applied, right? The same way as we have margin five top bottom here, um, it's not gonna add the two together here and make the extra space, all right? So again, if I just grab PX2 here and I just do a margin, maybe top of six rem, you're only gonna see this increase by one rem actually. All right, so keep that in mind. Margin collapse is a thing and it's on margin, but not on padding. The next unit of measurement I wanna talk about is M's and I don't really use M's. M's really depends on the parent, really. So I have a div here with three paragraphs, and I can go on this div and set a font size of one rem, for example, or let's do two rems. So that's 32 pixels. So as you can see, since I set it here in the div, all the ch child elements are gonna inherit that font size. So we know all of these are two rem right now. However, I can go here and do a font size and use M's instead, so I can do one M. And that basically says 1M is gonna be equal to the two rems up here. All right, so you're gonna have to calculate. It's like 100% of it, right? So if I wanna double the size of this, I'll do two Ms and look at that, there we go. So compounds, all right? Or if I want 16 pixels here, I can change this to 0.5M, all right? So if you wanna scale stuff up based on a a parent element, you can do that with M's. Now, I don't really use this much at all, but sometimes you might have an instance where you might wanna have half the size of whatever the parent has. And that's very easy to set with M's. You just do half of that. Let's look at CH. Now, you might have some paragraph text that you add to your website. And by default, that's gonna be display block. So it's just gonna take up all the width. And if we stretch out the viewport, of course, it's gonna wrap around the way we expect it to. However, sometimes you that doesn't really look good and fuck me, that's hard to read. So I don't know about you, but I would click off. So what can we do in this case? Well, what we can do is use the unit measurement CH. And with CH, essentially what CH is, is the width and the size of one character. So if I do a max width of like 50 CH, essentially what I'm saying is I want my paragraph to stretch out to only 50 CH, and if it's more than that, drop it down to a U line. And there we go. Another unit of measurement is percentages, and that's quite used in a couple of situations. You could use it to set margin and font and uh, padding very easily. So if I go here and do a margin of 0% for top and bottom and 5% left and right, that's a great way to just easily get a responsive. Um, margin going here. As you can see, if it's really small, that still looks good, but the more we scale up, the larger our margin gets on the left. All right. Uh, another place I'd use percentages is when setting an image. So if we import an image here, by default, the way an image behaves is it just doesn't give a shit. Okay. It, <laughs> it is just going to take up the size that it is. You're going to see that it's just going to go crazy and take up all the height and all the width. So the original size. So what we can do is 
grab this and of course add a width of 100% to restrain it and now it's going to scale up to the viewport's height and of course you can drop it in a div and everything else uh, but you need to do that other than that on actual elements I wouldn't really change the width of it most of them like only in certain scenarios or specific scenarios where you do want to stretch it out to the div's size uh, but I think it's just certain use cases. Usually with height and width, you want to let the actual elements dictate that. So what I mean is like if I set paragraphs here and I keep adding stuff, right? The height is gonna be added just by adding the actual elements. Rarely ever do you wanna go and do a div, right? So let's say this whole section of ours and add a height to this. You would wanna do this in case you maybe wanna have a page, like a front page that you know, it's specifically designed to have all the elements in that one page. So you'd go and do a height of 100 VH. And 100 VH is gonna take up the viewport's height. In case our div here, or the elements inside this div uh, get overflown. So if I have loads of stuff in here like that, the content is gonna be clipped off, right? Because we're specifically setting 100 VH here. So as you can see where the blue background ends, that's where our div gets cut off. So to fix that, what you do is rather than doing height, you can do a min height. And what that does is if there's more content in it, it's just gonna stretch the height out to fit the actual content. Now the same way you have VH, you also have VW and that is the same if you want to set the width of the viewport. So I can have a diff here, and as you can see, I have a paragraph in. So I can style this up any way I want. I can add a width of maybe four rem to it and a height of two rem. Let's also add a background color of light blue. All right, so there we go. That's, that's it. We have Street Fighter right there. And now if I do a width of 100%, as you can see, that's gonna just take up the full size of our viewport. Cool. However, you might have a more complex structure where you have another div here, class, I'll just name this box like that. And if we grab box and add a background of light coral this time, as you can see, it's right there. Uh, if I do a width of 10%, that's gonna take up 10% of this div's height, right? Um, but this might be 50% like that, right? So now it's gonna take up half of that. Uh, if I do 100%, that's gonna take up all of it. But sometimes you might wanna do something weird or wacky and you might wanna take up more space of that. Or maybe 80% of the viewport height or all of it. So then you can just opt for using VW. So if I go and say 100 VW, that's gonna take up 100% of the viewport regardless of the div that it's being contained in. So there we go, that's it. Those are the most important CSS units that we need to worry about. But there's a couple of more out there like X and Vmax and Vmin and shit like that, but it's not as important. It's more about like worrying about the phones, like if it's in portrait mode or landscape mode, and then you can do some adjustments based on that, but it's not important. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be it from me today. Thank you so much for taking some time and sticking around with me. Hope you enjoy this in new format and I'll see you guys in the next one. Check out my courses and subscribe. Bye.